Hello and welcome to this drive that will go from Trondheim to Namsos, or the first day of our coastal journey all the way to Senja. My name is Emma and I'll be your guide today. So we're just leaving somewhere north of Trondheim Airport and we're going to be following the E6 or the European Highway 6. It does actually take you all the way to Schekenes, which is in the Arctic, but we're just doing a small section. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to make our way north towards Steinscher. So how this driving guide works is basically I'm going to show you the drive that we did and I'll also provide some information on what you can see and do along the way. You can also find a written version of this guide at hiddennorway.com which is my online travel guide for all of Norway and you can also download a PDF that provides a summary of everything we're going to see today. We did this drive on the 1st of June 2021, and as you can see, the weather was absolutely amazing. Uh, in fact, the whole road trip we did from Trondheim to Senja and then back south had amazing weather. So be sure to check out all the installments of this road trip on my YouTube channel. Anyway, let's get going and I'll keep you updated with all of the main points of interest. So shortly you're going to see a church in the distance. Uh, this is Skutval Church. It's a lovely, lovely church from 1901. Uh, you can drive all the way up to the church and take some photos if you wish to. We just drove past it. Here's what it looks like up close. It's kind of unique because it's built in a Swiss chalet style. So that is Skutval Church. You can see it just in the distance over to the right hand side. Now it's believed there's been a church on the site since at least 1589. Uh, it used to be called Floen Church. Uh, the earliest existing historical records of this church date back to the year 1520, but that's not when the church was built. The first church is believed to have been a stave church, but not much is known about it. Uh, the church was rebuilt many, many times uh, in 1670, in 1767, and then again in 1901. So just a little bit about me, my name is Emma and I'm an authorised tour guide in Norway. I work as a local guide in Bergen, but I also take groups all over Norway. This has been my profession for the last six years and I've been documenting all of my travels and experiences on my website hiddennorway.com. Uh, so this is uh, my full-time job, I absolutely love it and I'm so excited to get to share this part of Norway with you. So sit back and enjoy the drive. We're just going to drive through the landscape for a little bit and we'll be coming back very soon. So we have now arrived into the municipality of Levanga. Levanga municipality or Komuna. Now Levanga is a very old region and it's possibly a settlement from the Iron Age. Levanga is known from the Viking Age as it is mentioned in the old sagas when it was ruled by a chieftain. Evidence of the Viking Age is found around the municipality in the form of burial mounds. The one by Alsted Haug Church called Alvshaugen is from 300 to 600 CE. Historically, Levanga was an important marketplace between Norway and Sweden. The town was founded by King Charles XIV of Sweden on the 18th of May 1836, but by then it was already a well-established village. The market had been taking place there since the 13th century. 
Throughout the 19th century, the famous market's economic importance faded and it became more of a tradition than a viable market. During World War II, the German forces ended the market and it was not until 1989 that it resumed. It still takes place today, but it is more so for tradition. Now today, the biggest industry here is timber and the world's largest paper producing company, Noska Skog, has its first ever factory in Skogen. The factory provides 530 jobs. Let's continue our drive through the municipality of Lavona. So coming up on the left is this really weird American-inspired roadside diner and museum. Uh, the owners went to the US and they got really inspired. They bought an old Ford and they brought it back. Uh, if you go to hiddenorway.com, I've put up a link to their website. So you should definitely stop here. I'm really, really sad I didn't know about it when, before we uh, did this road trip. So yeah, check out this weird roadside diner. To the right, you can see the railway tracks for the Nordlandsbanen, which is the train that goes between Trondheim and Buda in the Arctic. It's absolutely beautiful here in Trondelag, which is the name of the county. So really enjoying this drive. We're still traveling on the E6 or the European Highway 6. the road you can take to get to the Frostatinget. It was one of the early Norwegian courts, which are known as the Things. It is arguably the oldest one in Norway, predating the Viking period. This is where all the chieftains would come together to meet and discuss laws and events. Uh, it is marked with a huge stone. We're now driving through the village of Orson.
now about to arrive at the full start center, which is uh, a leftover concentration camp from the Second World War. So this uh, was a prison camp that is the most complete camp left in Norway. It was used during the German occupation, mostly for prisoners of war. And uh, we're going to be able to actually see the building here as well. The camp was used primarily for forced labor, and around 4,500 prisoners passed through the camp. Today it is a memorial site that researches and promotes human rights. You can visit the site outside or visit the indoor exhibitions. Unfortunately, when we visited the centre, it was closed to the public as part of the pandemic. But luckily, you can still park outside and see the main building. And they also have all of these signs that explain the history of the centre. So it's the yellow building you can now see on the left. This is the only remaining part of the concentration camp. All of the barracks were torn down after World War II. So here is the Falstad Centre. So we didn't show this on camera, but after we went to the centre, we drove about two kilometres to get to the Falstad Woods, which was used as an execution site during the war. Uh, there is a marked trail with all of these little stones that show you where the graves were, and there are also some information signs that tell you about who was buried there. Uh, because there were so many executions here, they don't actually know how many people are buried here. This is what the stones look like and this is what the forest looks like. It's a really beautiful site, and if you have some time, you can actually drive from the forest, or oh, pardon me, you can walk from the forest to the Falstad Center. Anyway, let's keep on going. Um, I have written a whole thing about the Falstad concentration camp, which you can view on my website, but let's go somewhere else. Now we're going to go to Stiklestad, which is a very, very famous place in Norway's history. Enjoy the drive.
now passing the turn off that you can take to get to the ruins of the Munkabi Abbey, which is a nice place where you can go for a walk. Uh, this is a historic monastery that has been torn down, but luckily some of the stone walls are still standing. The abbey was founded sometime between 1150 and 1180, and it was most likely a Cistercian uh, centre, and the most northerly one in the wilds. So there it is, there's the turn off just to the right. We were originally going to go, but we were running out of time, so you do need about 20 to 25 minutes to drive there, and then maybe 15 to 20 minutes to explore the site. Here we are, we're still just seeing very typical scenery that you would see in central Norway, making our way further north towards Stiklestad. at Verdal Municipality, so we are almost at Stiklestad. Now Verdal Municipality, it uh, has traces of settlement that go back to the Stone Age. Medieval farms are mentioned in written sources back to the 12th century and tell of nobles who resided here. Stiklestad is the most famous site here, uh, but also what happened here in 1893 was the largest landslide in modern Norwegian history. A unique word to learn for this area is Ronning. It refers to all the young people here who love cars and they spend a lot of time improving or styling their own cars. Now the main industry here is uh, the offshore oil industry as well as agriculture. Verdal is also known for having lots of big lottery winners. So make sure you buy a lottery ticket when you're here. We are so close to Stiklestad. I can feel it. I hope you're enjoying the drive so far and I'll be back in a second. See, I said I'd be back in a second. Now, Stiklestad is a small agricultural village with a big story. It was the site of the most famous battle in Norwegian history. The Battle of Stiklestad is when Norway's St. Olav was killed in battle in 1030. Today, Stiklestad is not so much a town as it is a huge shrine to St. Olav. Even if you aren't religious, um, it's a really cool place because it's so well known in Norwegian history. They've got chapels, they've got monuments, and of course they have museums and shops as well. So there's a lot to see in Stiklestad. I've actually written my own article about it, which you can find on hiddennorway.com or via the link in the description. And I sort of talk a little bit about all the different main points of interests, as well as what you should see and do while you're in Stiklestad. So it's just a few minutes off the main highway. We'll take our little turn off to get off the road and then we'll be in Stiklestad in a second.
we have now arrived in the village of Sticklerstad, and as you'll see, it's basically just a huge uh, tourist destination. To the left is my favorite building in Sticklerstad, and what I think is the most important building to see. That is Sticklerstad Church, built in 1180. And you can also see there's a huge car park, so this is where you park. Uh, you can't park in front of each individual building. You do have to walk between them. So park here, and then immediately to our left is the tourist information center, and the hotel, and the cafe, and the museum, and the shop. And then you'll see all these signs in Norwegian and English that point you to all of the main attractions. So explore Sticklerstad, and when we come back, we will continue making our way north towards our final destination, which is Namsos. me once again we are now at Indoroi municipality so we're getting further and further north on the European Highway 6. Now this is primarily an agricultural municipality but it has been inhabited since the Middle Ages. It is home to one of the oldest churches in the area, Old Saxhaug Church. So uh, the coat of arms I showed you is a place which is a very uh, common fish in this area. Grass and grain are the most common crops grown here. You can take a detour to the village of Suxhauk, which will have the church in it if you wish to. We did not on this drive. Another detour you can take is the Golden Route, which is a scenic road that takes you past all of these farms where you can buy produce. It's a really, really fun thing to do. You'll see the sign on the left, uh, sorry, the right hand side. But yeah, this is Indoroi Municipality. The next place we're going to stop on this drive is Mara Church. It's not as old as the Saxhaug Church that we just mentioned, but it is a very beautiful old church. We're now in the village of Rura. Rura is how you say it. Uh, it has a population of about 430 and it is located on the Old King's Road. So this is the journey that the king would have taken. 
This uh, landscape has completely changed after a major landslide. Uh, the landslide was a very long time ago, but it completely changed the landscape that you see here. Let's continue. We're very, very close to Mara Church, which will be the next uh, point of interest. now arrived at Steinshare municipality which is named after the major town in the area it is a historic location it has been populated since the stone age and uh, some of the finds here are 6,000 years old it was also an important place during the viking age Steinshare is one of the northernmost areas in norway with really rich agriculture as you can see around us now here they primarily produce grain so you can see the Nordlandsbanen, the one we were mentioning, it's now on the left hand side. And uh, Steinshare Town or Steinshare City, we will pass through it a little bit later. If you are looking for a hotel or some shops or a petrol station, it is a really great place to stop. everyone I hope you're enjoying the drive we have now arrived at Mara Church which is an important church from the early Viking Age it's actually believed to be a pagan uh, worshipping site the church was built over the pagan site in the 12th century so under the church is where they still have traces of this original pagan worshipping site as well it's a really really cool church and I do recommend taking the detour up here. We're actually parking at the agricultural school which is probably not what you're supposed to do. Uh, but we didn't know where the parking was. You can actually park right in front of the church. This is what the church looks like. I really recommend coming. Uh, they have information boards that explain everything. This one's in Norwegian but there is another one that is written in English. So this is Mara Church.
we have now arrived in the town of Steinshare, which you can see just over to the left hand side. So sadly, this is a very modern town because it was completely destroyed during the Second World War. It was bombed uh, by the Luftwaffe in the early years of the occupation. Steinshare has been rebuilt with the thanks of aid from the United States in the years following World War II. The population is around 12,000 people. There's not too much to see in Steinshare, I will be honest. Uh, but it does have a lot of facilities, like if you need a sports shop or if you need a supermarket or a petrol station. It has got all of those, so this does make for a really good stop. One thing you can stop at is the train station is one of the very few buildings that survived the bombing. So if you do want to see an older building, then you can go to the Steinshare train station. So very soon we're going to be turning off the E6, we'll be leaving the E6, and we're going to be following uh, the road to Namsos.
some very dramatic music as we make our way into Namsos, which is the final point on this stage of the road trip. Namsos is not very historic. Uh, there has been a settlement here for a long time, but the town wasn't officially founded until 1845. And with its location being close to the fjord and the river, it was primarily a town for exporting timber. And you can actually see all the piles of timber over to the left hand side, because this is still a major industry. You can also visit the Norwegian Sawmill Museum, if that's of interest. Uh, it's actually in one of the old preserved sawmills, of which there are not many left in Namsos today. Uh, because Namsos has been affected by several fires, and the town has also burned down uh, a couple times. Also, during World War II, Namsos was bombed by the Luftwaffe, and the town was destroyed again. So sadly, uh, a lot of the original Namsos is not here today. Uh, I have written a whole overview of Namsos, as well as an online travel guide. If you want some information on hotels or restaurants or things to do, you can find that at hiddennorway.com slash Norway slash Namsos. Uh, the main hike to do is Bjormsklumpen. I probably said that completely wrong. It's a very popular hiking mountain. It takes about 20 minutes from the city center. So this is where we spent the night and we stayed at the Scandic Rock City, which is the main hotel in the area. We had a horrible night's sleep at that hotel because it had no air conditioning and to, this night was very, very hot. It was about 24 degrees Celsius. So it was a very bad night's sleep, but it is a lovely hotel. Uh, just make sure you double check that they will give you a fan, which is something we forgot to do. Uh, but then after this, we drove from Namsos to Brønøysund. I did film it, but sadly I lost the footage. I didn't upload it properly from the GoPro and accidentally deleted it. So I don't have a video of that day, but the following day we drive from Brønøysund to Sandnesjøen, and that one I do have the footage for, so be sure to check out the next installment of my central Norway road trip from Trondheim to Senja and back south. So we're just making our way through the city center of Namsos, and as we get closer to the hotel, I will say my goodbyes. Here we are in the city center of Namsos. You can see the main town center over to the left hand side. And then on the left, you'll now be able to see the main shopping center in the city. It has an electronic station. It has a wine monopoly, supermarket, clothing stores, everything you'll need. Now the large car park to the left hand side is for the Scandic Rock City, which you can now see to the left as well. It's that tall white building. So it's the main um, hotel in the area. To the right is another small shopping center with a Rayma supermarket. So this is the Scandic. You sort of have to drive around and then come in. Uh, there is another hotel behind it as well. So you can also check that out. Uh, there used to be a museum here called Rock City, and it was because there are a lot of famous musicians out of Namsos. Uh, the museum didn't last very long, however, because it wasn't making enough money to sustain itself. So not enough people were coming to Namsos to learn about all the rock musicians from there. If you go to the Namsos church in the city centre, they actually have a statue for one of the famous musicians here. 
Although I will be honest, Norwegian rock music is not really my thing, so I'm definitely not the right person to ask. Here's this other little hotel you can see. And then we'll drive uh, around the back of the Scandic Rock City and you'll be able to see the main fjord. Really, really beautiful views from here. And we actually took an evening walk along the harbour just to sort of take in all this lovely scenery. But here we are, so this is where I'll wrap up. I hope you've had a really good time doing this road trip with me from Trondheim to Namsos. And hopefully you'll be able to do it yourself someday if you are planning a trip. Uh, I hope the information was of use. Make sure you join me for my next video where we go from Brønøysund to Sundnesjøen in central Norway. Here we are. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Emma. My website is hiddennorway.com. Tusen takk.